Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Pigment Playtime, where I look at paints and pigments and experiment with them with mixes and playing with them. So in this episode, we're going to be looking at Garnet Genuine, a Primatech colour from Daniel Smith. So this is a tube that it comes in. It's only available in a 15ml tube. They don't currently offer it in a 6ml tube or a larger tube. This is a Series 4 colour, so quite pricey. It has low staining, it granulates, it's supposed to be extremely transparent and very high in light fast rating. These are just the stats I pulled from the Daniel Smith website. So there's a dry blob already on the palette and I'm going to squeeze out some fresh. It does dry quite well considering it's a Primatech colour. Some Primatech colours can dry quite hard and crack and be very hard to re-wet once dry. Garnet Genuine is not like that at all. And the consistency of the paint is quite good from the tube as well. It's not got a strange sandy texture or anything like that like some of them have. It mixes and dilutes with water quite nicely. You can get quite a nice thick wash or a nice transparent wash. This is the darkest you can get the paint here in the palette. So I'm going to paint it out. This is on cold pressed watercolour paper from Bockingford. So you should be able to see whether or not this paint granulates like it promises on the, the website. This is a transparency test. So I'm painting an extremely concentrated swatch at the top. I'm trying to get it as dark as I can get it. That way you can see the real depth of the colour and see how dark it will go. I'm then blending this out with clear water and I'm pushing the clear water up to the paint to see how the paint flows into in water. I am going to do some other tests as well, including a bloom test. So I'm painting out clear water and dropping in paint and seeing how it flows and moves within the water. And it shows how the paint disperses and how it behaves. I'm also doing the opposite, painting out a swatch of wet paint and dropping water into it to see how much the colour is repelled by the water. Sadly, I messed this test up and put too much water in and it just created a bit of a mess. And then also doing a mass tone test here to see what the mass tone of the paint is. And that's just painting a decent wash out and see how it behaves in a flat wash. I'm also doing a salt test. So sprinkling salt onto the wet paint and seeing how it behaves. This is a granulating colour so it should behave somewhat to it. The other way that I test and experiment with colours in the Pigment Playtime episodes is by colour mixing. So these are all the colours on my watercolour palette and I'm going to be mixing these with Garnet Genuine. So I have cool yellow, warm yellow, cool red, a warm red, brown, a violet, green, lots of different blues, a really good range of colours. A scan of the colour mixing sheet and all the colours on my palette can be found over on my Patreon page, which you can gain access to for as little as $1 a month. I really do recommend checking it out, especially if you are a fan of my handmade watercolours as you get sneak peeks and first access to them over on my Patreon page. And I would be extremely grateful if you could guys ch could go check it out. I will leave a link to it down in the description bar. As well, any materials that I use and colours that I use will be down in the description bar as well, where you can find out where to get them.
So a little bit more about Garnet Genuine. According to the Daniel Smith website, danielsmith.com, Garnet Genuine has all the warmth and allure of the January birthstone. This is a pre met tech colour and is gorgeous with warm reddish orange tones similar to the hue of quinacrolone burnt scarlet, but with a more granular texture. Try mixing it with cerulean blue for beautiful mauves and greys. It behaves wonderfully and creates unexpected surprises in washes. It's made with genuine garnet, has excellent light fast, is transparent, low staining and it granulates. Personally with Prima Tech colours I always take the made with 100% genuine stuff with a pinch of salt. You don't know what they mix it with or how they achieve that colour. I have tried to make garnet watercolour myself and have struggled greatly because of the size of the pigment particles. It can be quite difficult to mould and I also question how close some of the colours are of the Prima Tech series to the actual stone. So do take it with a pinch of salt. I'm not saying that they are all fake. There may be garnet in this, but there may be other stuff, so just keep it in mind. One thing I did notice in particular when working with the garnet is it has a kind of strange smell to it. I can't quite describe the smell, it's kind of like an old musty kind of smell, but this paint does smell. But please do be careful, don't go around sniffing paint, use your uh, wits about you on this one. When I first painted out this colour, I immediately disliked it, as I often do with new colours. However, after experimenting with it, playing with it, doing a little bit of painting with it, I did actually kind of enjoy using it. It's a very unusual colour, it's a bit like an earth tone. It is similar to the Quinacrylone Burnt Scarlet, which is PO48, but I find the PO48 a bit more orange and red than the Garnet. I noticed that it's a beautiful colour you can achieve with Garnet when you use it in a wash, in a really light wash. So that's definitely something that I will be experimenting with. Quite a lot of colours from Daniel Smith Prima Tech range do really interest me. They are quite pricey compared to normal paints, especially here in the UK when these are from the US. They're a bit pricier, but some of them are worth it, and this one could be worth it, so do keep in mind when buying any kind of Prima Tech paint. If you guys are enjoying this video, please remember to hit the thumbs up button and leave a comment down below. It really helps my channel out. And make sure you check everything else out in the description for extra info. So we're going to look at the colours now once they've dried down and get a really good feel for them. Okay, and we're back and the colour has all dried, paint's all dried now, we can see what it's doing. So, first off let's look at the transparency test and the actual wash, so a gradated wash and just to see how well the colour did. So this is the darkest you can get the colour, and this is it fully washed out and blended out with water. And you can see that it's quite a difference. Concentrated, it's a nice brown, ready brown colour. When you wash it out, it's sort of mid-tone here, it goes quite nice orangey pink, nice coral pink colour, it's really nice. The colour is completely transparent, there's hardly any deposit on this black line. There's maybe a tiny bit of deposit here and there where the pigment has settled into the grooves of the paper, 
it's more of I think a kind of paint texture thing rather than a opacity thing. So in terms of granulation I wouldn't say this paint granulates but it does have some kind of texture as you can see here. Some of the paint has settled into the grooves of the paper. I wouldn't call it strong enough to say it was granulation and it's just kind of a texture to it. It's kind of got a sort of black undertone in the, gra in the garnet itself. So the other test, the dispersion test, it doesn't move massively in water. I mean, it dispersed quite nicely, but it's not a huge, huge flowing paint. I've seen some move less and some see move a lot more. So it does vary. It's, 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 it's fair, I'd say. It's fairly, it moves fairly in water. So the opposite of the dispersion test, the water droplet test, I am, I kind of messed up a little bit. Instead of it, I think I put too much water on and instead of it doing nice little dots, it just all flooded. So I do apologize for that. In mass tone, it does a very nice mass tone. It's a very strong, consistent mass tone. with A few black speckles in it, which are that kind of texture to the paint. It reacted nicely to the salt test. It definitely made some nice shapes. I think I put too much salt on though. So it's a bit crazy, but it does make some very nice patterns. So in terms of mixing, so reminder again of all the colours. So I made mixed with a good range of colours that sit on my palette, pretty much all of the ones I use. So a good range of mixing. And this is the hues that it's made. Um, it's made some nice earthy tones, some nice oranges and reds and coral colours. It makes a really nice neutral when mixed with the blues, almost black, I would say. That's quite a black colour. And also a kind of green mixed with green strangely um, it doesn't make a huge very mess range of mixes this would be good for skin tones and earth tone paintings anything you want really earthy now of course the big question is is this paint really worth it it's rather expensive one of Daniel Smith's most expensive paints and it really is kind of like a the way I would describe it is it's like Venetian red but it's not opaque and it's a bit more earthy so if you mixed sort of venetian red with burnt sienna you get this kind of color i think this is supposed to be a very good alternative to burnt sienna when you don't want one that really heavily granulates which this doesn't you can definitely see mixtures like this it, there's no texture or granulation even though it does sort of have a texture when in wash form on its own so that's something to keep in mind whether you're going to use this paint on its own or in a mixture. In the mixture there's no granulation, um, but in washes there is. So do keep that in mind. So what do you guys think? Is this a paint that you really want or have? And what are your thoughts on it? Is it a must have or is it just a gimmick? Because I know that Prima Text can be a little bit gimmicky, the whole gemstone thing, when really it's just still colour, regardless what it's made from. So guys, let me know what you think down in the comments down below. And please leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. So take care everybody and see you next time. Bye bye.